Welcome to summer, everyone. The time when educators recharge and rejuvenate our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. While the last school year fades out of sight in our rearview mirrors, we need these summers to prepare ourselves for the inevitable next school year that lies not as far down the road as we might want. I am incoming PMEA President Scott Cullen, and I invite you to take a deep dive into professional development with PMEA at our annual summer conference on July 18th and 19th at the Doubletree Hotel in Reading. Our summer conferences are an excellent means to earn some Act 48 hours and to begin to dip your toes into the new school year all in a relaxed environment amongst your colleagues. In my experience attending past summer conferences and to continue with the theme of a deep dive, Perhaps the greatest benefit of the summer conference is the opportunity it provides to gain greater clarity of those topics that we might only have a surface level understanding. Our conference this year features sessions on gender identity and LGBTQIA plus advocacy, fostering a sense of community in your ensembles, teaching hip hop, global competency, and many more. We also welcome featured keynote speakers, including Rollo Dilworth and Suzanne Hall from Temple University and NAFME President Scott Sheehan. There is also a Tuesday afternoon performance by the Ringgold New Horizons Band, a component of the music education and outreach program of the Ringgold Band. The goal of the Ringgold New Horizons Band is to celebrate and share the joy and proven health benefits of recreational music making with the senior citizens of Berks County and beyond. And lastly, the 2022 Summer Conference is also playing host to PMEA's second annual Day of Service, which is open to everyone and a wonderful opportunity for all of us to give back to the Reading musical community. I do hope to see you there and to make as many acquaintances as possible. In order to register, please visit www.pmea.net. You can find Summer Conference information under the Conferences and Events tab. Come on in. The water's fine. On today's PMEA's Take Note podcast, we are talking to another PMEA alumni that has done good, and this time in the world of military bands. That's all on today's PMEA's Take Note podcast, presented by the Slippery Rock University Music Department. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of PMEA's Take Note podcast. We have a really interesting one for you today. We always like to talk to PMEA alumni and hear what great things that they're out there doing and uh, in the process, see how much credit we can take uh, for that uh, as well. But uh, in all seriousness, uh, today with us, uh, we have... uh, from the president's own United States Marine Band, First Lieutenant Darren Lynn. Let me bring him in now. Darren, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mark. It's great to be here. So uh, we're going to get into a lot. Let me just uh, throw a couple pieces of the puzzle out there to begin with to talk about the Pennsylvania connection here. So a 2009 graduate of Hershey High School, uh, which uh, I think is very cool is we really want to talk about uh, your involvement there and in PMEA because of that. Um, went on to do some other really great things. And if you look behind him, I think one of them is being at the at uh, Michigan, because I see a uh, yeah, I see a Shaco back there. Uh, uh, actually, are, do you guys wear Shakos? uh with the marching band we did yeah yeah okay uh, gotcha if you're asking about what the okay no. <laughs> i was like now with the marine band now <laughs> right 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 yeah i know yeah I, we, we, yeah back with uh, michigan uh but but then back in pennsylvania you were an adjunct professor of percussion at lebanon valley college uh mm-hmm. and uh then you uh in uh, you know again if you read the bio, we'd be here for an hour because there's lots of really important stuff that he's done. Uh, want to want to highlight the Pennsylvania parts, um, but something really big happened in July of 2021 uh, when he was named as the assistant director of the President's Own uh, U.S. Marine Band. So, Darren, uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Of course, of course. Thanks for that uh, that rundown. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. always weird to hear it all. Yeah, but right. Yeah, it's been a lot. It's been a wild journey. 
<laughs> well, I want to hear about that journey. We want to talk about that today. So let's let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about your scholastic music years. Um, maybe even, you know, pre-high school, uh, in, into high school. What did you participate in music-wise? What was your thing? I did uh, basically everything that my school district had to offer. Um, you know, so I went through the Hershey school system, Hershey Elementary, Hershey Middle School, Hershey High School, great schools uh, with great music educators. Uh, and on top of that, my little cheat code, I guess, uh, my mom is actually a, a piano teacher. And so I grew up with music in the home. Um, she tried to teach me piano when I was younger, didn't work out too well, um, but she instilled this love of music for me um, at an early age. Um, so that was helpful to have growing up. And then when I was in public school, um, you know, I joined the bands um, and I was in jazz band. I was in marching band. I was in orchestra. I was in the musicals, both in the pit and then on stage, although that might have been a mistake. Um, and just almost anything that uh, my high school and everything uh, had to offer, I, I really tried to take advantage of. So in, in that time frame, then, are you thinking music is a career I want to go into? Or are you just saying, hey, I really enjoy it? What was your thought process then? Um, at first, I, I just enjoyed it as a hobby. And, uh, you know, for the longest time up until maybe November of my senior year, I thought I was actually going to become a uh, computer programmer. Uh, my my best friend and I, we had this plan to go to the same college, um, get programming degrees and design the next Halo together. Um, and it was in my senior year that I realized that I hated math and I hated, uh, you know, programming. I was just really bad at it. Um, and so I did a quick pivot. You know, music had always been there, a huge part of my life. And uh, I had been you know, getting some nudges from both my band director and my private teacher at the time. And so I thought, why not take the plunge? Well, I, so far, as, as we ran down your resume there, I think it was uh, it was a good choice for you. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about the PMEA connection uh, as you were uh, in, in high school. Um, you know, what events were you in? What was that like for you being involved in PMEA? Yeah, PMEA uh, really opened the door um, and showed me just how how music could really bring communities together, um, and just it was it was fantastic. Um, you know, there were a lot of really talented musicians at my school, um, but then going to all state, regional, districts, county bands, and just being exposed to the level of musicianship around me uh, was really pivotal in me. Just you know, putting my nose to the grindstone and and getting better and growing as a musician. Um, and so my junior year, I believe, I made it all the way to Allstate and I played in the wind ensemble. And I remember working under, I think it was Eugene Corporon from North Texas that year. And it was just the most impactful experience. I had never played music at such a high level um, with such an inspiring conductor before and uh, really laid the groundwork for when I decided the last second pivot into music. Um, and so I really cherish that experience and that memory. And it's all definitely thanks to PMEA. So, um, you know, so many people talk about their PMEA experience from the social aspect of meeting friends. Uh, you talk a little bit about, you know, who you got to work with there and some of these great conductors and, and that transformation kind of, uh, you know, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but of a, how, how rehearsal's done and what that concert is like at that level. Um, you know, so was that really kind of the thing for you in a PMEA event that, wow, you know, going and performing at this level with peers who are, are as into it as I am, was that one of the, the, the takeaways for you? That was one of the biggest takeaways for sure. Um, just the level of commitment from everyone around me uh, really inspired me and, and kind of forced me to take my level to the next, you know, take my game to the next level, if you will. Um, and, you know, when you talk about the social aspects, um, you know, meeting meeting other people that just loved music as much as I did was, um, you know, it was freeing in a way. I was like, oh, this is not weird at all. I can, there are people like me and we're all friendly and we're up. And there's some people that I still keep in touch with to this day that I've met through PMEA. So um, it's the music world is small as uh, if anyone here watching this is considering going into music, it's small. And that's uh, in some many ways, it's a blessing. 
um, because you make these connections. You don't know when you'll make them, but they'll last uh, your entire life. Yeah, and and it's it's really interesting just to to kind of take off that point a little bit. You know, yeah, you folks like you have have chosen a career in music, but a lot of those all state folks that were with you may not have, but they still have some connection um, from being involved in music. And I think that really speaks to your early point about community and what what music does for community, being part of it, being an observer of it. I mean, it, just being involved in it in any way. Uh, community is a word that is probably, you know, right up there equal with when you say music, you, you, you think community as well. Absolutely. Uh my, I've been on this kick recently of uh, music being the universal language. Um, we've had a couple of special weeks here at the Marine Band recently, and one of them was uh, the Latvian Armed National uh, Navy Orchestra came into town, and we did a joint concert with them. And it was, it was just incredible to see our musicians and the Latvian musicians work together. Um, you know, language barrier for sure. Um, but the second the conductor gave the downbeat, we were all on the same page and we were all just working towards that common goal. So uh, very inspiring for sure, the power of music. So uh, let's talk a little bit about kind of your career of how you got to the Marine Band. So, um, you know, of course, went through the the normal channels of going to college and, and you know, and getting the appropriate degrees. Uh, end up, as I mentioned earlier, teaching at Lebanon Valley College uh, for a while. Um, so that's you know that's a really cool lifestyle that's really cool things that you you get to do i think you know in, in being in higher ed and in, in, in that space uh making a jump then from that civilian lifestyle to being part of the marine band i mean the president's own the the premier uh group um that's that's kind of a big jump can you talk to us a little bit about you know, why you made that decision to go that route and then um, kind of how you got there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when I was, I, I guess I'll start a little bit before I got the teaching post at Lebanon Valley. Um, so I was in Boston, Massachusetts. I was at the New England Conservatory and studying with uh, the percussionists in the Boston Symphony. And uh, I think it was around that time that I had made up my mind that I was really going to try and win an audition. Uh, and, and get a full-time performing job um, as my career. Um, and I, you know, it's it's a difficult path to take. Um, not a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people, very talented musicians who take plenty of auditions and don't win. It's not because they're not good. It's just because the odds are so stacked uh, against you. Um, there's, a, there's a fun, I don't know if fun is the right word, but there's a, a fact, if you will, where, um, you know, it's statistically, it is easier to join the Yankees as a walk-on uh, hmm. than it is to win an audition. And so, you know, I had my work cut out for me, but, um, you know, it was, it was a passion of mine and I, I kind of wanted to see if I could do it. Um, and so my high school teacher, who was actually uh, was my predecessor at Lebanon Valley, um, he told me that he was thinking about leaving and he wanted me to apply for his position, which I did. I was, um, you know, things worked out uh, well for me in that. And I was asked to join the, the faculty there. Um, and during that whole time, though, I was still taking auditions, um, still chasing the dream that I had, uh, the goal that I had put in front of myself. And, uh, you know, being a musician, uh, you're you're constantly looking for the next gig, right? Um, I think there's this myth, this mythos of the the starving artist and mm -hmm. it's romantic and it's beautiful until the end of that first week. And then you're like, if I eat one more pack of ramen, <laughs> like I'm gonna lose my mind, right? Um, and so um, the every, I was taking a lot of auditions and I had taken the Marine Band audition actually once before. And the Marine Band, you know, is, you, you'll get this like newsletter in the professional world where it's like uh, the Dallas Symphony has an opening for oboe or the Atlanta Symphony has an opening for whatever, right? And uh, premier bands, including the Marine Band and the Navy Band and the Air Force Band and Pershing Zone, all really great ensembles, they'll also announce there. Um, but there's something about the Marine Band that had always drawn my, my eye. Um, and, you know, I think being the president's own and being such a historical prominent organization um, was really interesting to me. And the fact that that ensemble has been basically 
in history, um, history adjacent is what I like to call us. Mm. Um, but it's it's just so cool to have access to these moments that most people just read about. Um, and even in my short time in the band, I've been privy to some really important events that it's it's surreal to be able to be a part of. Um, and so they I saw an opening for percussion. I put in my resume, uh, worked up the audition list, and yeah, I just had a really lucky day. They um, <laughs> liked what they heard. I was one of uh, 50 people, I believe, that came out that day for that spot. And so, um, you know, I'm, just, I'm grateful that it was a good day for me, and I'm grateful that the committee liked what they heard. And uh, it was, yeah, it was the start of this chapter that I'm currently in. It's, it's been a wild ride. So let's talk about this chapter a little bit more. Um, I, you know, I guess I can boil it down to this basic question. What is it like? What is it like being in that Marine band, as you say, so close to history, witnessing so much history right in front of you, having these incredible opportunities kind of just lined up for, for you to take part in next? What is, what is that like? It's it's surreal, honestly. Um, you know, I still remember the first time um, that you know I saw the president and in person, and I, you know, I I almost missed my entrance. This is back when I was a percussionist, um, but it was just surreal. You know, these figures that you see on TV and read about in the newspaper, um, and just to see the human side of them when the camera isn't on them, right? Um, it's it's really special. Um, but with that um, comes a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of tradition in the Marine Band, and there's um, a lot of expectations that we place on our new members. Um, and, you know, uh, there is we, we don't have the traditional tenure process here in the milita military bands. Um, but what we do have is a traditional four year enlistment period, um, which sort of acts as that tenure process, both for the player to see if this is the environment for them and for the organization as well to see if, you know, if this person's a good fit. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it was for the first year, I was just, I was like, I'm just doing my job. I'm learning my notes and I'm making sure I'm not late to anything. Um, and I just enjoyed the ride and everything that came along with it. It was fantastic. So let's talk about uh, day to day. What, you know, what, what is the, now that you're, you know, I, I'm skipping over, I guess, I mean, kind of this big moment of being named assistant director. Um, what What is the day to day like then in in that role, maybe as a musician and then in your role as, as an assistant director? Sure. Um, I'll start as uh, when I was a percussionist. Um, I mean, both both start the same way, which is it depends on the week uh, as a percussionist. Uh, you know, the band has a lot of duties. Um, to include our concert series, to include our ceremonial duties. Um, and because of that, you know, we're constantly juggling a lot of hats. And as a drummer, it was it was like the dream gig. Um, you know, one week we're doing funerals at Arlington National Cemetery. Um, so there is some marching involved in the job, right? But then the next week I might be playing a concert cycle with the band or the chamber orchestra. Um, we also have brass quintets that we send around the national capital region for events. Sometimes there's a drummer attached to that. We have specialized groups in the Marine Band. We have a Latin jazz ensemble. We have a big band. You know, we have jazz combos that play frequently at the White House and other places. Um, and it was just, you know, it was as a drummer, especially, you spend all this time learning all these skills and juggling all these hats. Um, and to find a job that lets you wear all these hats is pretty rare. Um, but for my I think it was two years I was a percussionist in the organization. Um, it was just amazing to be able to flex all the muscles that I had built up during my time in school. Um, but now as I've moved upstairs and now, uh, now I have just one stick instead of two, um, <laughs> the responsibilities are different for sure. Um, but again, it depends on the week. Um, sometimes I have a, a concert week. And so I'm leading rehearsals with either the band or the, the chamber orchestra. Other weeks I'm prepping for a White House commitment. So, you know, I'm I'm reading down the schedule, I'm reading about the guests, I'm trying to plan the music for the event to make it really special. Um, and other times I'm just, 
you know, doing administrative work, making sure that the organization continues to run as smoothly as it has uh, over the last 224 years. Um, so it's um, it's a new set of responsibilities and challenges for sure. Um, but, you know, it's it keeps me on my toes, uh, keeps me young, even though I still think I am young. Um, <laughs> But it's it's really rewarding, and uh, it's nice. It's it's a good feeling to know that everything that I do has some significance, not just musically, but um, you know within the organization here. So, as you, you know, you, you mentioned the the this long history of of the Marine Band, and one of the things that I think about when I think about military ensembles, um, and and really very particularly the Marine Band, is um, the the choice of repertoire and how in so many ways those choices become reference recordings uh, for schools, uh, at, you know, and, and also just what you're picking um, kind of helps, I think, set the dialogue uh, for other like organizations. Uh, oh, okay, well, they've done this literature. I'm not aware of this. Let's, you know, I can hear it. Now I can learn a little bit more about it. Um, I'm curious about that process then, uh, you know, what what is your process then for picking rep um, for, for let's just say that is a, you know, a, a, a not necessarily a concert that's because um, a, there's a foreign dignitary coming in, but let's say it's just some type of general to the public concert or you're working on on some recordings. What What is your mindset of, of how you're picking rep? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, I'll use tour, our national tour, as a sort of blueprint for this answer. Um, tour was one of the first things I did as a percussionist with the band, and um, it really sold me on the organization and its mission and how my values, my personal values, aligned with it. Um, you know, going back to the idea that music is communal, it's for the community. Um, you know, our national concert tours every October, every year, and we hit a different region of the United States. Um, and the thing that I love about it, I think that is different from when orchestras go on tour is, you know, we do play the nice concert venues, but we also go to, you know, high school gymnasiums, we'll go to high school um, concert venues, you know, just places that aren't uh, the big cities, right? And we'll go to these communities and, um, for some of these communities, it's like the biggest thing in the year, right? Like the president's own is coming um, and the gymnasium. I mean, one of my favorite concerts um, and one of my favorite memories was in a high school gymnasium and it was just packed standing room only. Um, and then we're in their space. It's so welcoming because they know it and we're there visiting and we're just offering our gifts. Um, and one of those gifts is um, the repertoire that we choose and now that I'm upstairs and I have a say in some of that, you know, I think it's really important that we represent all of America, right? Um, I have a, a friend of mine who's a conductor and he, he sort of has put in my ear recently, um, you know, he's, he told me, you know, I don't think America's uh, a melting pot, you know, cause, because when you melt everything together, we lose the colors and the things that makes everybody special. And it becomes just this, like this gray, right? So I really think America is a mosaic uh, where everybody is a different color. We bring different experiences, memories, cultures all together. And it just brings, it's this beautiful collage that is this country that we live in. Um, and so for me personally, when I think about what I want to program, uh, I try to honor that. And I try to, to give, um, voices to those that um, traditionally have maybe didn't have that opportunity on a concert stage, right? Um, and to give value to every art and music that America has to offer, which is an incredible amount when you think about it. Um, and so to be able to share that, um, all that research and all that thought with these audiences is incredibly meaningful. Um, and there's the one thing I love about our tour and um, some even our summer programs here in the region is that there's a little bit of something for everybody, right? There's always a patriotic feature. There's always some sort of pops uh, vocal medley. You know, there's the uh, the hard hitting band standard uh, for the band directors and the and the high school musicians and everything like that. We we really try to cover all our bases 
Um, and I think it just opens doors and eyes and ears um, in the best way possible. Yeah, and uh, I no pressure, but I just think that is that's kind of an immense responsibility uh, that you have, and and I I love that mosaic uh, idea uh, and, and thinking about that, and that is true as as I've seen performances from the Marine Band and, and, and other military bands. Uh, there are those different pieces of the puzzle that come together, and there is truly something uh, for everyone. And uh, for the students uh, that might be listening to this, or even some of the directors uh, who were involved in our Crescendo Student Conference earlier this year, uh, you were so wonderful as to put together uh, some highlights of some of these ensembles. Um, and even that showed the wide range uh, in that concert of the ensembles, but then the, the types of music uh, that you're playing. So I just think that's uh, incredible. Um, and, and congratulations to you on, on just taking on that task, because I, I just think that's just a monumental task. Um, speaking of monumental things, uh, I've seen on social media that the, the band is heading to Europe. Uh, now I understand you're not, um, which kind of, <laughs> which kind of speaks to then, uh, maybe because there is so many different things happening with, you know, with different ensembles and things. Um, so, but talk to us a little bit about this Euro European tour that the, the band is going on. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to look at my notes. So I don't mess up this, uh, acronym here, but the band is going to Europe um, for WASPI, which stands for the World Association for Symphonic Bands and Ensembles. Um, it's uh, the second time. So I was doing some research before this and, you know, surprisingly, we, we haven't had too many trips abroad. Um, so the most recent trip abroad was uh, to Japan in 2019, right before I joined. So I missed ah. out on that, fortunately. <laughs> um, but before that, I don't think the band traveled outside of um, our country until uh, since 2001. So, you know, this is a pretty significant um, trip for the Marine Bands. And we have, you know, we have a global presence um, which is, you know, a little surreal when, when I sit back and think about it, but it's great to be able to connect with a totally different audience, um, but still appreciate uh, appreciators of the, the band, the wind band form. Um, but uh, yeah, the band will be um, visiting a number of countries. Uh, let me just find it here so I don't mess it up. Czech Republic, Austria, and the Netherlands, you know, um, and this is all first times that we're going to be interacting with these audiences. So I think it's going to be really special for everybody involved, um, not including me, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so on tours like these, and even for our national concert tour, um, you know, we have, we have a very large band, you know, if you're ever bored and um, you want to check out the Marine band, uh, go to our website and click on members and you'll see all of the musicians we have uh, serving the organization. So we have, uh, just over 130 musicians that are in the Marine Band. And, you know, the reason for that is we have so much going on. Um, you know, we have some some weeks that are not as busy as others, but when we have our busy weeks, it's every all hands are on deck. Everyone is working very hard to accomplish our mission. Um, but when we do our tour, um, generally what happens is we have about half of the band go, and then we have the other half stay. And that's what we call the home guard band. So we stay back and we take care of funerals, anything that pops up at the White House, stuff like that. So we can still accomplish our mission back home. Um, and so that's my duty uh, this summer. I like that. Oh, you know, just anything that might pop up at the White House that we have to, <laughs> you know. Go I got to keep of. it low key, though. I can't I can't get a big head just yet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, we'll, we'll give you the big head because I, I think you uh, you deserve <laughs> it uh, for, as we've run down today. So I would also encourage folks to go check out uh, your website. Um, so many things on there uh, uh, of great value, uh, you know, just from just learning about the Marine Band, but um, just so many wonderful uh, things on there. And uh, and we'll put it up on the screen for everyone to see as well. Um, so first, Lieutenant Darren Lynn, the Assistant Director of the President's Own United States Marine Band. Thanks for taking some time to talk to us today. Of course, of course. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. And uh, we we really love to hear that PMEA connection. Uh, and so, we, you know, we'll, we want to take a little bit of a credit for, for all the success <laughs> you've had.
you can take all the credit. Sorry. Oh no, no, not all of it. You, I, you know, you, you had a lot to do with it too, but certainly, uh, you know, we, it's 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 so great to hear the those stories uh, from those who participated, uh, particularly in the Allstate ensembles, uh, and then to see the great things that they've done. So, congratulations to you, and and thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much. The uh, speaking of our national concert tour, the band is actually coming through Pennsylvania next October. So um, be on the lookout if we're near. Uh, I hope you can come see us live and come up and say hello. Absolutely, yeah. I, so I, that that that's a special treat. Uh, if you can get to see them, um, it's certainly worth it. And and, and any and any uh, military band, you know, we had uh, the the Army band at this year's conference, uh, and it's it's. There's this special energy that always comes with military uh, groups. So, so yeah, if you, if you if check the website and see where they're going, and if you're close, uh, you, you want to check that out. Uh, I'm certainly going to do that. Darren, thanks for talking with us today. Of course, take care, everyone. And thank you all for joining us on this edition of PMEA's Take Note Podcast, presented by the Slippery Rock University Music Department. We'll see you next time.